Quick shout out from our sponsor, Sheer ID. Are you trying to boost conversions to your Shopify store? Need to drive more customer loyalty? Get results fast by offering exclusive discounts to consumer communities with Sheer ID. Sheer ID helps verify students, teachers, military, first responders, and so much more of these groups. With Sheer ID, you'll get a verified match in seconds. You can spit out an exclusive discount for customers on the spot. Try speaking directly to a new customer segment with this verifiable identity without adding friction to the shopping experience. Continue to drive incremental revenue in the next 90 days post-purchase with more tailored messaging for your email and SMS campaigns. I personally tested ShareID to see just how easy it was to get set up, and I was pretty much ready to go in under 15 minutes. The onboarding was simple enough for me to follow as a non-technical person. Go to sheerid.com slash Shopify and start your free trial today. Once again, that's sheerid.com slash Shopify and start your free trial today. The brands that are moving fast, that communicate fast, are transparent and have those tough conversations, they're going to find a way to win. There's so many ways to win that it really is just who's really about it, who's really focused, who's willing to do the work because there's so many ways. And then again, if you partner that with the right minds, you're gonna find the end zone, no matter what industry you're in. Um, I feel like that's been the recipe for the brands that are doing really well. Hello and welcome to e-commerce uncovered. I'm your host, Matt Lady. Thanks so much if you're joining for the first time and welcome back if you're a returning listener. Each and every week I get to chat with and learn from a variety of passionate, intelligent founders, operators, and practitioners in the wonderful world of commerce. My mission with this show is to provide tactical and practical info and insight for D2C brands to grow profitably and sustainably. Today's episode is with the previous marketing director at CrossNet and current partner at Homestead Studio, a full service growth agency for seven and eight figure D2C brands. Without further ado, please welcome Joel Patron. Joel, how's it going, man? Welcome to the show. Pretty good, excited to uh, connect. Thank you for having me on, Matt. Yeah, dude. Excited to jam out. Uh, let's start with where you were. You were at CrossNet and marketing director. What's one of your favorite memories from jamming out with Chris and all those guys there? That is really hard to pin one good time with, with that crew. Um, that's really tough. Just a lot of good times being able to work with everybody through the, you know, through the ups and downs. A lot of good times just hanging out. Um, so really it's just spending time with most of the most of the team members, whether we're on a trip, whether we're working out of somebody's apartment, but really my favorite memories is just spending time together and working on the same thing that we were all really passionate about. So it's it was a very fun ride. Um seeing how far CrossNet has grown and it's continuing to grow today. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um I'm sure like in-house brand, it's a little different than the agency. You're all one team you're all like aligned you're all at the same thing every day it's not like this client one day and next client the next day so i'm sure that was a, a little bit more maybe of a family kind of team aspect feeling there um so let's 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 brag a little bit more that was a that was a pretty good political answer political <laughs> correct answer pretty kind of not too spicy or not too uh outrageous takes there but What's one of your biggest wins that you remember? Like, what's one thing you're like, damn, that's so cool. Like, I did that. Or like, oh, I can't believe I pulled that off. What's yeah. or like a big day? Uh, yeah. So those, the, there were a lot of good times. I think my personal favorite was uh, the first Black Friday, Cyber Monday that we had together. Um, that was 2020. So I still remember just like, it was a long day to say the least, but being able to see like the dashboard, like us really working so hard, um, planning for like two months and then just being able to see how far we, we were able to take it and exceed all of our goals. Um, that was like one of my favorite moments because it was the first year that we really had a full team. So seeing how much we were able to accomplish um, once we had more team members and we're able to like really lock into the vision. So for me, that was one of those memories just had to pour out a drink, celebrate, have a good time and just watch the dashboard keep going up. So, um, that, that's my personal memory. It might've been cause it involved a little bit of whiskey, but. <laughs> uh, hard to complain about that. Uh, and those shop of the, the live dashboards, especially for, uh, on black Friday, man, like they, they have the whole like worldview kind of one, like global, uh, man, those are, 
those are uh, really fun. <laughs> I, I think, I think, okay, I can't, I've come up with this idea. This is not in our pre-recorded uh, or before the show questions. How do, how do we make fantasy or like some sort of like betting or predictions and tie it into e-commerce like Black, Black Friday? Like, do we get brands or agency owners like, oh, over, under this many sales? Like, how do we do that? That sounds like so much fun. I am there. I'm with that one. That would be a that would be a really good one, especially you know, in a, if you're working with an agency or even if you're a brand in house, just like come up with like internal prop bets. Which actually, actually, we did do that that Black Friday. So <laughs> we had it, we didn't gamble on it, but we had whoever got the closest amount of orders that day would end up winning. Um, so somebody ended up winning. I did not. And we did better than I even guessed. Um, so there was a lot of celebrations in the Slack the next day to say the least. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, okay. I knew it wasn't like a totally original idea. I'm, just, I'm glad you guys did it before, but I want to try to figure out something like across t- D to C Twitter. Cause, um, Jess from fire team always does his March madness, like bracket thing with the tactics. So I didn't know if there's any, something we could do for the fall for, uh, like black Friday, but that was just kind of random that kind of just came up but i think um, i'm with an idea i think okay that could be a tweet we need to get a poll going and see if we get everybody in on one massive prop bet how okay how this black friday goes awesome okay let's um uh, yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to that and we'll uh we'll get it going and see if uh see if we can get anything there so then you uh you jammed out at crossnet marketing director over the years you got a full team together you guys kept growing and scaling and uh, a few months ago in uh, 2022, uh, we're currently recording middle of August, you joined Homestead Studio, um, like I mentioned, and you started out as the head of paid, uh, I believe, and then now you're a partner. So what was that transition like for you? What made you want to kind of take that next step in your career? And then what do you do to that? How, what do you do now? What's that role differ like from before? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that definitely was, um, you know, it was, it was a difficult choice to, to make that move. Um, but really it was just one of those fun moments where, like I said, when we joined, it was like, we went from a team of like four or five to like almost 30. Um, so that was a lot of fun just being part of that hyper growth. Um, and in a way I was just like, I want to keep going. I want to keep going. I want more dashboards. I want to keep applying, you know, a lot of the learnings that I took and brought to CrossNet. Um, so for me, it was like, I wanted to get, get to that next level and learn, um, learn, work with even larger brands and then see what I could do across multiple different brands. So that ultimately is kind of like what led to my uh, decision to kind of go the agency route, no matter how many people told me I was absolutely crazy. I think every single person I talked to told me you're crazy. Why would you do that to yourself? Um, but I'm kind of a crazy guy that likes to go against the grain. So I'm super happy. Um, so yeah, it, it, definitely, it definitely was a, a, a big change compared to one being on brand side and then going to agency and then having a, a pretty different role. Um, so really when I joined us at a paid, it was really a lot of just learning and absorbing information of one, how can I keep up with all these clients? And I'm used to just being so deep on one. So figuring out how much attention, what are the highest level things you could focus on? Um, but fortunately, we have an extremely talented team um, where everybody's able to lean on each other. We're all able to bounce questions, ideas, feedback off each other. Um, so for me, I've, I've loved all of that learning. Um, so, yes, um, after, after you know, that initial role as like just head of paid, um, it's really been leaning onto my strengths. And luckily, the team has been open to that. So one of the big um strengths that I feel that I bring is a lot of, you know, systems, process, process uh, implementation. So that kind of led to me shifting over and becoming head of operations and a partner um, just so I could really help from a, from like a, a more macro level, assisting clients with strategy, helping bring business to the agency and just overall, you know, still focusing on client performance. So for me, it got, it, it's scratching that itch where, I'm learning like crazy every single day. I'm able to work with a bunch of different clients, um, see the see the ideas that we're bringing to the table, learn different business models. So, it's been a whole lot of fun to say the least. 
Good man. Uh, love to hear it, and I can tell when you're answering. I, I just, I can see you. You, you just seem excited, seem happy. Uh, so that's that's great to see. So what's um, yeah, I, okay. Head of paid now, head of operations, more macro and more strategy. You kind of see. Um, you mentioned that it is a little different. You have to manage multiple clients across dozens of them even um sure and versus just going super deep uh, cross net in and out every single day yeah what what's one of the biggest differences between uh in-house which you did for a couple of years and now agency which has been probably a half a year um mm -hmm. or so so what are the biggest differences you're noticing so far besides that um balance between going deep and going wide yeah um so that by far is the biggest part of it, where it's, it's learning how to like what to focus on. Um, but I think the biggest difference now is being able to, you know, being in house at a brand. Typically, you have a little less resources. Um, it obviously depends on what brand you're in. Um, but now the difference is at least comparing, you know, being agency side versus in house at CrossNet is being able to have a much larger team and more resources. Um, so it's pretty cool to be able to see the speed, um, be so much faster. Um, I think that's the biggest thing of having the speed, the talent to be able to get any idea, any strategy executed super, super fast versus when you're in-house, you know, you're typically working with what you've got. Um, so I think that's, that's the biggest change. And for me, again, like that's part of the challenge that I was looking for of just moving fast, as fast as possible, working with you know, on bigger challenges. So that I think would probably be my biggest change. Yeah. That makes a ton of sense. Um, there's like maybe more content calendaring or like processes or um, when you're working directly with the founders on a smaller team, like just maybe more hands and cooks in the kitchen oh, yeah. sort of thing. And then when agency side, you're just like, cool, like client, this is what we should do. And we can do it for you. You're like, they're just like, okay, approved. And then you just go do it. Uh, so I think that's, um, I think that's a pretty common, uh, pretty common observation from people. So I'm, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. So we did, I uh, did bring up that I see across brands, visibility, access, you're able to kind of see trends, um, Instead of just looking at one single triple whale dashboard, <laughs> now you, you can see dozens of them. You can just kind of flip through and see how things are going. So um, in the current climate of where we're at, intercession about to head in one, I think we're already in one. So like, what are the brands that are, you see struggling, whether they have continued to struggle through this year or are starting to struggle even more? What, what are some common things uh, common factors that you're noticing? Yeah, I absolutely love that question. I, I, I love it. Um, funny enough, it, it's um, it's kind of like the same question or problem that I first noticed when I, I joined the CrossNet team. So it's very fundamental, but really it, it seems to happen to a lot of, you know, seven figure brands anywhere, like, you know, in the lower to medium scale of that is really identifying like know it like really actually knowing who their audience is like being able to pinpoint this is my audience this is what they're into this is why they buy my product um that is is kind of crazy to think that you could sell over a million dollars of product and not really have nailed in um so that's that's clearly something that brands if you want to succeed in 2022 and further like you need to know these things um it's not as easy as 2020 2021 um so that you know is one of the most basic things but it still happens um, and it kind of not too far off from that is knowing what offers work. Like it's, it's super important to know what resonates with your audience aside from just who they are. So it's, it's who are they and what do they care about? And, you know, tying that back to your business. So how can I get their attention? And obviously you do need to have conversion. So what is it that really makes them tick? Um, so having a clear offer of what products, what, offers, how you frame it, what benefits, the brands that are struggling don't have clear answers on that. And that's one of the, I think, the most important things that a brand should figure out before you try scaling up. Um, so those those are the, the two that are very fundamental that I really feel strongly about. Cool. 
Yeah. And so offer like just to dig in a little bit more what that means. So you're selling a product and it's like, for example, a cross net, you're selling a cross net. Like, how do you have a different offer from you're just, you're just a one product brand at the, at the time. Uh, like, what do you mean different offers? Like, what, can you give me an example from there or from other brands and kind of explain for the folks what, what, what you mean by offer? Yeah, I, I love that question. And CrossNet was a perfect example of that, where, like you said, at the time, it's just a one SKU brand. What can you really do? Um, so for us, it was it started off with figuring out who our audience is. So when we when we really were getting started, it was we thought it's going to be, you know, the college demographic that, you know, like 16 to like 30 or so age demographic that's really going to be out there playing. Um, so we were really focused on pushing the sport component of CrossNet. When we really looked into the data, we actually found out the majority, the vast majority were moms purchasing, purchasing this for their kids. Um, so I think that's a perfect example of why you need to know who your audience is, because once you know that answer, you can start crafting ads that ads, copy, everything that's more specifically catered to that audience. Um, that's why I think it's the most important. When it comes to offer on a one skew brand, that definitely was a challenge. <laughs> That was a challenge. Um, I can share what we what we ended up doing. So typically brands are quick to just be like, okay, well, throw up a pop-up, you know, do it your 10% off, $10 off, whatever it is, the standard. Um, something that we found out was we actually bundled the only other product that we could have, a volleyball. <laughs> so we have uh, we have a co-branded volleyball with Wilson. So it retails for, I can't remember if it's 25 or 35. Um so instead of offering, let's say $20 off, it's like, let's offer this product that, you know, retails at a larger amount. And obviously, you know, you're, instead of shelling out cash, you're, you're shelling out product, which, you know, you're saving money in a way. We found out that that actually outperforms by so much. And we're actually like providing more value. We're giving you a ball so you can start playing. Um, so you don't need to come up with anything crazy. You know, just, it could even be as simple as a brand has free shipping, and they're not offering, they're not even showing that in the ads or as a banner on the website. They just notice at the checkout. So you don't even need to come up with anything new. It's all about how you present or have your, your ad or your product or your offer perceived. Got it. Okay. So it's not necessarily, oh, just make, like, you're not saying, oh, go make a new product or just keep expanding your SKU line. Then you can make new offers. You're saying work with what you got. And it was simple as, uh, accessories, free gift with purchase, free shipping. There's a there's a bunch of things you can do, and I think um, a good example is uh, my friend uh, Richie. He's a head of growth at She's Birdie, and they just they sell the little personal safety alarms, mm -hmm. and so they just have the one safety alarm, and like they have a bunch of colors, right? Um, and now they have a like an app and subscription. But at the time, it was just. You buy two, you get 10% off. You buy three, you get 15, you know? So, so like buy five, you get 25, you know, like, so it could be as simple as that. And you're bumping up your average order value with that. That's giving you some margin back on ads. Um, so I think, I think there's just different ways to think about it. Um, and sometimes uh, founders, media buyers, people that are working on these projects, they're so close to it that they don't like, you just get stuck in this like little cylinder and silo. You're like, oh, but this is the only way it has to be. You but nailed that You nailed that so on the head where I feel like that is now that I'm able to see a higher level view is it is a lot of times, you know, brand owners have that tendency or even people working on the account is just being so narrow where I like to zoom out. And one of the best things that I like to do is go through the customer journey as if you are a prospect. And for every single brand, no matter what the size is, no matter how optimized they are, I don't know if it's just coincidence, but 100% of the time, I always leave with a lot of valuable like ideas, viewing things from that, that prospect's uh, point of view. So that's another easy free way on how you can go through, figure out what you can make better um, without needing to pay for like an audit or anything like that. It's like, just put yourself in that journey and you'll, you'll see things that come out like, I wish I was showed this. I wish you talked about this. So... You nailed that so, so well. Well, thank you, man. Usually I don't uh, get that compliment on my show, so I'll take it. Um, <laughs> sure so, 
Yeah, man. Oh, thank you, thank you. So those that's what they, that's what brands are um, they're struggling with. You're saying they don't know their audience, they don't have their offers dialed in before they're scaling, um, and then we touched on a little bit about what kinds of offers you can make. So yeah. generally speaking, like on the flip side, brands that are having success, that are still growing profitably, that are still scaling, uh, any any big things that jump out to you that they're doing differently than uh, those brands that are struggling besides saying that they have their audience dialed in and their offer dialed in? Yeah. So there's obviously so many different ways to win, but I think the ones that really, um, that really stand out to me is one is how much expertise you're surrounded by. I think in today's environment, you really need to invest in smart, like this invest in whoever has the most knowledge and experience in that certain field um, that is more valuable than ever right now. Obviously the landscape is difficult. So you need to have that instead of just like a very bloated, you know, team. That's, that's something that we've obviously seen a- across, across the entire like country is just a lot of different layoffs. There's, there was a lot of bloat. Something that is important is invest your cash as smart as possibly. And in that knowledge, um, one of the other things too, is that the execution aspect of it, um, that's something that. I've seen has been a big benefit being on agency side is you're able to, if you're able to execute, like execution is the other side of it. The brands that are moving fast, that communicate fast are transparent and have those tough conversations. They're going to find a way to win. There's so many ways to win that it really is just who's really about it. Who's really focused, who's willing to do the work because there's so many ways. And then again, if you partner that with the right minds, you're going to find the end zone, no matter what industry you're in. Um, I feel like that's been the recipe for the brands that are doing really well. A quick reminder from our sponsor, ShareID. Find your next lifetime customers by providing verified discount codes based on occupation or life stage. Speak directly to veterans, students, teachers, first responders, and continue to tailor your messaging to them in the future with post-purchase emails and text messages. Make them feel seen with your brand by using ShareID to seamlessly verify their email in seconds during the purchase process. Go to shareid.com slash Shopify and start your free trial today. Be smart, be surrounded by smart people, listen to them, communicate and get after it. Get uh, it done. Get it, yeah, get it done. Uh, it's it's always, uh, sometimes it really is, uh, boils down to be that simple of work hard and like outwork the competition. And that's not to promote hustle culture and burnout and all this uh, but just sometimes it's like, that's the answer. Just like, keep doing what you're doing. It's true because it's, I wish there was like a magic pill nowadays. Like, oh, if you just run a subscription brand, you're going to make a bunch of money or, oh, SaaS multiples are super high. Like you should just do that and you're automatically going to win. You know, that's, that's what we saw in the recent years. It's like, okay, put your money in any stock or any crypto and do an NFT project. All right, cool. You made money. But that, that isn't the case nowadays. It's definitely that return back to reality. Um, and like I said, I really just, focus on nailing the most co- core components of a business. Um, that's going to be what's going to take you farther than any hack, any tweet that somebody's going to post. It's not, it isn't because you use the comments that have a period on your website. Like, sorry, that, that isn't going to be what changes it. Um, it really is just going to take a lot of hard work, but making sure you have the right plan in place. You could waste so much time if you're following the wrong idea, the wrong plan. Um, that's why I mentioned, you know, the communication aspect is important sharing transparency on what's going wrong. If you can't diagnose the problem, you can't find the solution. That's right. Like you got to tell your doctor what's going on. Like, ah, oh, doc, like, ah, oh, my stomach, like I'm feeling not so good. Well, Matt, have you drinking water? Uh, no, yeah, no. Uh, do you, do you exercise? Uh, no. Uh, like, yeah, of course I do. No, no, no. So like, you got to communicate and be honest about that. Right. Like you got to, um, the, the founders, their partners, their employees, the agencies, they all have to be on the same page. And I think sometimes we, not everyone, but a lot of people don't trust themselves and are looking outside to see like, oh, what's the answer? Like, what should I be doing? And then they see on Twitter or like, because we met on Twitter, we're saying t- Twitter all the time, but you're looking around and see what other people are doing and you don't know what their end goal is. You don't yeah. know, maybe, maybe their brand raised money and has investor money and they're running a different playbook than you. 
bootstrap founder, like you're not playing the same game and you're not going at the same speed. You're not going to the same end zone. <laughs> like they're going for the whole big thing of this huge exit. You're just trying to be profitable and make a little more money than last year and grow and keep running your business. Completely agree. A lot of the biggest mistakes that I think I've seen in the past is from doing that incorrectly of, hey, this per- this is working for that person. They talked about this very niche situation that probably only works 1% of the time. Um, so I completely agree. That's why it's, it's important to, like you said, communicate and find out what's wrong specifically with your business so you can figure out those holes. Because if you're just playing, what is everybody else doing? How can I mimic that? It's just not, it's not tailored toward your business. It's likely not going to end in the right direction. Yep. You're trying to prescribe uh, a solution to a pain or problem that you may not even have. You're yeah. just trying to copy and paste. I do want to tag on that because that is, that is one of those pain points where a lot of brands will panic and be like, okay, well, we need to just keep testing. We need to keep testing. We need to keep testing. Well, creative testing isn't going to fix your conversion rate problem. You know, one of the one of the ways that I split and look at that is are you are you struggling to drive you know traffic and cost efficiently or are you struggling to co- convert uh, your traffic? Typically, the problems are split up there, and that's that's like when I look at an account, the first thing I look at where are we struggling? So then now that limited attention, like we wish we could do everything. Unfortunately, we all have that constraint, so you need to make sure you're spending that that time in the right area and directing that. It's again, it sounds super simple, but it's the that five, 10, 15 minute conversation looking through what's wrong could save you two or three months and like hundreds of thousands of dollars in wasted spend, just banging your head against the wall. So that's why I really value expertise and, and that transparency from a brand or even agency pushing back. It's like, hey, you know, you're likely gonna encounter this mistake. I really encourage you to evaluate this. Um, so that's more important than ever because the landscape is tougher. Your 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 margin for for mistake is smaller than it ever was before. Right. No. I'm, uh, thank you for bringing that up and tagging that on, and that opens up a couple new uh, questions. And so, before pre iOS and pre a few years ago, uh, okay, like yeah, your your website's not the best. You you don't have the best trade of assets. But I'm good at Facebook. Like, let's, I'll take you on as a client. Let's just, we, we got this. But now I'm, I'm guessing a little more hesitant to do that. So how you haven't been, you've been at the agency for a few months, but how has those, have those conversations come up earlier in your process? Like before you even hire them, is it in the onboarding? Is it in the sales cycle of like the, a pre audit? Like how, what are you looking for? When before you bring a brand on, you, do, you decide if you're a good fit, if you can help them or not. Yeah, that that's actually something that we pay a lot of attention to, um, and we invest a lot of time on. So even pre audit, we're typically going to start finding, like, start asking a few questions of, um, you know, what your historicals look like. But we go really advanced and even ask questions like about your fixed expenses. Um, those things are going to make an impact on your business. So. We need to one make sure that you have enough uh, gross profit margin. So we have certain targets that we look for there. But then also you want to make sure that your fixed expenses, you need to achieve a level of scale to cover those. So that's the one flaw that ROAS has is it doesn't take into account volume. It's very easy to say, cool, I got you know 10 ROAS on a hundred dollar spend, but you lost a bunch of money. So um, in our process, we do look for that. Typically, you know, what we do see is if you're able to operate, if your break even is around like a two row as, um, typically you should be, you, you are in like a good enough position where running paid ads could get you to where you want to be. Um, if your costs are, are much higher than that, or you require a much larger break even point, um, it's going to be much more difficult because like we mentioned, uh, if, if paid social is your primary acquisition source, it's gotten more expensive over the years. It's not as easy as like you said before, just run it. You'll, you'll be good. It's, it's a little tougher now. Yeah. Okay. So that's the uh, acquisition side. That's kind of the front end. Uh, is there things on the site? Do you look through like email? Like do you, after that initial conversation, like what sort of things do you look for in this audit or what do you cover outside of those expenses as well? Like just yeah. curious. 
For sure. So that for, that is the most important part where it's really understanding the unit economics behind your business, all of the other points. And then what we like to do is create scenarios. So trying to see, okay, this is the current level that your business is at. If your goal is to get here, this is what your numbers would look like. Um, and then obviously we within that, we get to see kind of what our customer acquisition target is. And it even it even has like a built in uh, percentage of what what margin they would like to have for the business. So having that conversation up front and making sure that it's realistic, because there are times where you talk to a brand, they input their numbers and it's like, OK, yeah, we need we're going to be acquiring customers for four dollars. It's like. I, I, I hate to tell you this, but I don't think that's going to work, you know, if. if you're selling, and that's that's one of the tough things, especially now with low AOV products. It's a lot easier in today's market um, to succeed with a higher um, AOV. So that's obviously something we look for. And even for the brands that are in that mid level, where it's like you're kind of close, like around that fifty dollars, um, it's looking at that opportunity to either increase their AOV, or some of them have, let's say, Amazon channels, retail channels, where you could make up additional revenue. Um, so those are a few of the things that we look at. One of the things that I might have missed that's outside of the, the paid side is, is, uh, retention and email. So today we are still seeing brands that are doing pretty well. Some that are struggling have no email set up. It's, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. So, so yes, there, there are brands that have been absolutely killing it with no email flows, no anything too scared to send an email campaign. And then every time that we have a brand like that or even taking it over that was previously run, not in the most optimal manner. That's usually like that last 10 to 20% that you're missing to get to where you want. Um, so retention is super, super important. You can't think about paid today without having your retention strategies in place. Because again, if you're just shy of your goals, most of the times you want to look at your retention a little closer because that's what I've found gets you to like that last little bit that you need. Yep, and uh, totally. Uh, it I said crazy while you were responding. I usually try not to talk while people are answering, but it's just crazy that that's still happening. And so uh, all the people that are saying email marketing is dead or uh, emails, like it's not so simple as just send emails and make money. Well, like sometimes it is like, sometimes if you're not sending emails, send some emails. Uh, and then, you know, like just look at your inbox and like, see how many times brands send you stuff. Like, do you care? Most of the time you don't care. And like, if they really are spamming you, then, then you'll notice, but that's an extreme and yeah. you'll rarely unsubscribe or you'll rarely, uh, report them as spam. Right? Like, and we're again, it's too close to it. We're brand founders, we're the operators, we're the marketers. Like this is our profession. Like we're seeing that stuff. We're, we're consciously and subconsciously noticing all that way more than the average person. Like. The average person does not try to inbox zero their email. Like they don't even know what the f inbox zero means. So it's just like send your damn emails if you're not sending enough. Um, yeah, that is yeah. that is one of the big concerns. They, they, thinking like a marketer definitely is a, is a detriment a lot of times. Yeah, it's it's too bad. Uh, sometimes it's great. <laughs> sometimes it's like oh cool. I like would have never thought like brand founders who are product first and then figure out how to run a business and sell it and do all that stuff after they're just like, Oh, sh I didn't realize that. Cool. And like, that's where being a marketer and having marketers around you, having an agency, having freelancers can help. But, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. Okay. Um, so early. Okay. Uh, we don't have to go too deep into it. Cause I don't know how much you want to talk about it. But in terms of crypto and NFTs, like I'm, I'm, I don't know that much. I know enough to like ask you this question. Are we too early for, for most brands to actually consider that as a part of like a feasible tactic to like implement in 2022? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Too early. Like, like we just, it's so ironic where we just went from, the thought that email is dead and there are brands that are still not taking advantage of email. I don't think you need to worry about web three yet when you haven't nailed web two. 
that that's a simple that's good that's a great excellent amazing way to put it um <laughs> just gonna know that i'm not gonna bore everyone with the uh, crypto talk this time maybe in an episode in a couple of years uh we can get we can circle back on that um but okay so a little too early for crypto and, and web three just nail web two okay this episode is going to come out in a by the end of September ish, so that'll be almost Q four, and that'll be Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas, and then, uh, are you aware of Q five? This is like that that little window after Christmas and and then New Year's. I I never heard that term until recently. So yeah. is is that really what it is? It's post just <laughs> to January. And that that's again like again kind of new to me too. Um, someone mentioned it to me, and I was like, "Are you? There's only four quarters in a year, but th- like it's uh, it's an earnest term. They mean like cool. Well, Christmas is happening. Everyone turns their stuff off, and then you just blast your ads with like because uh, everyone like CPMs drop. So yeah. then you have like that end of New Year sale, uh, clo- like cl- close of the year sale, kind of like." try to clear inventory and like take advantage of the cheaper CPM. So that's, that's Q5. I guess I'm, I'm teaching you something today or clarifying something. So, um, but anyway, back to Q4, Black Friday, <laughs> like, let, let's talk about that. Where do we start and how would you advise someone starting to think about Black Friday a couple months out? Yeah. Yeah. So Q4 is those conversations are going to start coming up as early as it is. Um, but yeah, I would say like one of the approaches that I like to take is, I like to really lean on my, you know, my previous data. So that is going to be, if your brand's been around, you know, look back at your last Q4 and try to identify what's worked well. Um, You don't need to reinvent the wheel. If you had like a really good offer, a really good promotion, if there were certain creatives that did really, really well, I would be, I would even recommend um, trying to rerun that creative or even, you know, spruce it up a little bit. So it's like, find the components of it that worked well, apply it to what you're offering your new products are this year. Um, so I could get a little more technical on, you know, what we did at CrossNet for, for last Q4. And really what we did was we looked through um, our historical data for that year. So what were the top five or so ads? Uh, sorry, top five video ads, top five image ads, Uh, we even did GIFs and then we did like different styles. So we took those and then added over like text overlays. So more of like a border, um, showcasing our offer. So let's say if you're running like a site wide 30% off everything, you could take your already winning creative and then just add that above it. Um, super, super simple way. If you're short staffed to be able to get something that's going to work because Q4 I've seen, uh, in the past. Ugly and direct works the best Q4. So literally just, there's going to be so many ads, just showcase your offer, showcase your product and don't, don't get too tricky with it. So that's what I would really, really recommend. And I feel we're going to recommend to a lot of brands is, Hey, you know, these, these products move the best. These creatives work the best. What's your offer? Let's try to promote that in the creative itself. And, um, I feel like it's a surefire way to one, not for cash, Make sure the money that you're spending is allocated efficiently because like we touched upon before, it has been a tougher year for, for e-commerce brands. So a lot of like, I feel like a lot of your annual forecast really banks heavily on your Q4 going as planned. If that doesn't go well, you know, that really could break a couple businesses. So I don't feel that's the time to test. I would not take that time to really come up with very brand, like very new big swings um, I recommend testing them now. If, if this is airing, you know, early October, get your initial test in now with smaller budgets, see what's working and then, you know, feel confident once you're putting those big dollars behind at Q4, um, you're going to get the most out of it. Two, two things follow up. One tip, one extra question. One tip is depending on your brand, uh, use Halloween as a test for the test offer. It is uh, almost a month ahead of time. It's depending on your brand, it can be viewed as important or special enough uh, or relevant enough. And that's where you can kind of play around with that. Um, so th- what Joel was just saying is like test it uh, ahead of time. You can, you know, tie in Halloween. Uh, Follow up question. Leading up to Black Friday, what's your take? What's your philosophy on 
spend allocation. Uh, I, I hear a lot about, oh, you want to spend up until Black Friday on prospecting. You want to buy the cheap traffic when the CPMs are lower before you like actually hit the actual Black Friday dates and date ranges, which keeps moving up every week, <laughs> every, every, it's almost uh, October some, so for some brands. They just start like a month ahead of time and just call it a holiday sale. Like what's, what's your philosophy? What's your take on all that? Like spend allocation um, leading up to that day. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a fantastic question. Um, what I personally believe is a lot of brands overspend uh, leading into Q into uh, black Friday, cyber Monday. Um, the reason why is because when, if you were to compare month to month uh, forecast of November and December, they're, for most brands, they're around even or December outperforms. Um, that's because, you know, typically depending on the year where Black Friday falls, it's really like not even the last week of November. So you're going to that big spike that you're going to get is going to be at that tail end of it. So I feel a lot of brands when they're doing their forecast or their budgeting, it's like, OK, I need to pace at this amount for the month when it's like you need to backload a lot of that spend. But I do strongly also agree that it is important to invest in your prospecting and your list building. Um, what I do, what I would recommend differently is utilizing your other channels like organic uh, retention. So basic things like that we've done in the past to build up our list without spending, you know, a lot of like, instead of just wasting budget, what we've done is change our pop-ups uh, in November. So if you opt in, you can get at early access to the Black Friday sale. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you could do with it. One, you could, you could immediately give them if they enter their email, the black Friday sale early, um, or a ver or a variation of the offer it doesn't have to be the same. So that's, that's something that worked really, really well for us. Um, I think, I think the actual black Friday, we would give like just an extra $5 off on top of it just to be like, this is the best offer you'll get, um, where you're able to really maximize sales the be before black Friday. You're able to build up your list because they're opting in like, hey, if I'm going to wait until Black Friday to purchase, I'm on that list. And then once that comes through, if they haven't converted yet, you're able to really squeeze them and be like, hey, like for real, this is the biggest offer. You're not going to get it after this. So now is your time if you want this product. And that's it. Um, so that I, I would really recommend that strategy. I think that's something unique that we've done that I don't, I don't know a lot of other brands have done. And it's worked super, super well. Did it two years in a row. I hope they do it again this year. Um, and that's a perfect example of like, hey, it works very well. Your budget spent properly. And yeah, it. I highly recommend it. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. That's a good clarification on uh, allocating your spend, not just ramping up prospecting for no reason. Um, and there's a good point on how really late in the month it falls uh, and that spike comes. So it's like, oh, the first two weeks we're behind. Well, it's like, well, that's most people kind of just chill out and like wait to buy um, in the later in the month. And, you know, it depends on your brand and product too. So um, just good points there, man. Um, so uh, we're kind of starting to land the plane here and come to come to a close. Going to bring you down for a nice gentle landing. What was something that you um, wanted to talk about? Something that came up in your head after we finished a question? Uh, what's something that you're looking forward to uh, as you're more in this head of operations role? Um, like, let's, let's uh, give me give me something to end with, or you can ask me a question if you want. Yeah, I, I really I really enjoyed how we dove into like a lot of the main main uh, problems problems that I see. Um, what I would recommend for, for brands is really just kind of summarizing what you should be doing to make sure uh, that you're prepared. So be able to answer what, who your audience is and what they're purchasing for. So to make it more tactical, I highly recommend no commerce, their surveys, putting those post purchase. So the feedback that you're getting is from actual people that are buying it and not people just saying that they want it. This is actual hard data. Um, and the question that I like to use is like, how do you plan to use this product? Who did you purchase this product for? Having those concrete answers are super, super helpful. And that's a way that you could get your customer surveys in place at a very cheap, in a very cheap manner. Um, so if you have not set that up, that's one of the things that I would really recommend. And that's no commerce, K N O 
commerce. I uh, believe Jeremiah over there is uh, running things. He's he's seems pretty cool. So uh, that's no commerce. There's other tools as well, but uh, really important because then then you figure out. You can change your copy, you can change your messaging, you can change your creative, you can change the email, you can change the flows. Like that's where you take that data and then do something with it. Right? Cool. Like we agree. Like this is like our hypothesis is correct. Let's just keep doing what we're doing. Or, oh, I'm actually buying this as a gift for someone else. Then that you you need to shift that a little bit and maybe you'll see your conversion rate go up. It's worth running a test then. Agreed. And not sponsored, not, not sponsored. This is general actual advice. It's not shilling, not paid for this. It's just genuine, like rare, very easy, very practical advice that, you know, I feel most brands can take advantage of. Awesome, man. Oh, that's a, that's a really cool way to end. Go do your customer surveys, no commerce. Joel, where the heck can people find you if they want to ask you questions, they want to, hire homestead if they just want to pick your brain about stuff for sure definitely uh recommend if you want to work with us go to homesteadstudio.co um i'm always available on twitter that's where i'm hanging out so joel padrone just look me up there slide in the dms i will likely answer so um looking forward to talking to any of you awesome man well everyone thanks so much for listening joel appreciate your time uh please just uh keep listening keep letting us know what the heck you liked, what you didn't like, uh, leave a rating or review, and have a good rest of your day.